Life is so precious, so sacred. My heart is heavy, as a great majority of yours may be, since we've all gotten the news that actor Lance Reddick passed away. I am so honored to have had the opportunity to enjoy his company, his presence, his pride about talking about his career, but also to observe the humbleness and appreciation he knew he was gifted to have. Actor Lance Reddick, a wonderful man with a good soul and I can tell a great spirit. And this brother who is about to sit down with us tonight truly needs no introduction. I mean, we've been watching him ever since he first appeared on New York under uh, New York Undercover. And I'll get into that with him in just a moment. I'm talking about back in the 90s. But his plethora of work has definitely kept him in the game and moving strong. It is a pleasure to be welcoming for the first time to the Quiet Storm, uh, Brother Lance Reddick. Thank you for joining me tonight, man. Thank oh, you. thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. The pleasure is all mine. Uh, as I said a moment ago, we go back with you, brother. I, I don't know if you remember that Oscar Griffin role that you played. Oh, I remember. Uh, that, was, that was my first. That was my first on camera role out of drama school. I remember. <laughs> Yale drama, right? <laughs> yeah. So when you look back at that moment, New York Undercover, which was a phenomenal series, man. I wish you had been on more. It was a phenomenal series. Um, it was kind of groundbreaking at the time too. Yeah. Say that again. It was, it was kind of groundbreaking at the time, too. Yes, yeah. it was. Yes, it was. Um, but when you summarize your life, your career, from then to this moment, what does Lance Reddick say? Wow. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I've been so fortunate. Yeah, I, it's funny. I, I was. Uh, I recently been thinking that if I ever, uh, if I ever wrote a memoir, it would be called Late Bloomer. <laughs> really. Um, because I started acting so late, um, you know, I, I was 27 when I decided to start pursuing acting. Kind of when I walked in, I went to drama school. I was 29. My daughter was three years old. Wow. So um, uh, I just feel like I've been just so fortunate because it, it, it's changed my life. And even with all the, uh, I've, I've had my share of disappointments, and, and it's not so much disappointment, but I mean, I definitely have disappointments because that's life. But frustrations you know in terms of race in this industry and i yeah. still feel like i've just been so fortunate um uh, i'm just very grateful man I, that's a perfect word for you and for all of us no matter what industry that we're in uh us you know we're people of color man we always, always have had challenges and the challenges have been stuck with the advancement of technology or where we are in the year um but yes i would say that you had a wonderful colorful amazing and still going strong brother a still going strong <laughs> career uh, look, over the last, well, you're now your fourth, you're, you're entering your fourth uh, chapter of the franchise, John Wick. Uh, you are the consummate concierge. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you for, 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 look, you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen John Wick, I, I want you to go back and binge watch it from, from the first, from the first one to what is about to happen on March 24th. This man right here has done an amazing job. I, I don't know how cool you can be. In covering up for killers, assassins, and everybody else who's staying at the New York Continental <laughs> Hotel, <laughs> but you do it effortlessly, man. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those things where you, you know, you, 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 whenever you're talking about somebody who's, um, well, first of all, just the conceit of uh, not only a hotel but a chain of hotels, which which gets you gets expanded as you as you see more sequels uh, uh, that are. Uh, actually part of the organ uh, uh, an uh, underground organization or guild of uh, the, the top assassins in the world and how you be uh, the quintessential concierge for a place like that uh that, it, it, that was it was it was a cool opportunity this, this, this is fun it's been it's been quite a journey and obviously your character role well your, your, your presence alone has always been authoritative has always been distinguished has always been proper um, when we go back with you on the days of uh, The Wire and, and Oz, I mean, you know, you played detectives back then. So, you know, you've always been in this role of control. And it, I, it seems like these roles find you or you find them or timing is the perfect thing to say. That's how everything kind of panned out for your life and career. Well, it's really interesting because um, when you talk about control, 
for me, uh, I mean, Sharon has uh, a tremendous amount of self-control. In some ways, he's the most, except for maybe uh, Winston, he's the most, even more than Winston, I think he's the most self-controlled and self-contained character in the entire franchise. Um, but it's interesting because one of the reasons why I wanted to do the role was because uh, since The Wire, I, I just spent, spent so much time playing authority figures that talk a lot. The opportunity to play um, basically uh, a very taciturn, the quintessential servant uh, was real, especially especially in this world, was really exciting to me. Wow. So um, yeah, it was just in some ways it was just a, it was no, no chapter for myself as a character actor. Challenging, in one way. Um, challenging in that challenging in a good way. Uh, because I had I'd never really played a role like this before, uh, and I was cast uh, only a week before we, uh, I had to shoot my stuff for the first film, uh, and so I had to figure out the accent and I had to figure out the character because even though uh, it reads well on the page, he doesn't. He's he's such a he's such a linchpin of the first film, but at the same time he doesn't say a lot of words, so I, I had to find a way to inhabit him and and uh, communicate stuff. That wasn't necessarily said, and use the accent in a way that was um, that felt organic, as opposed to something that was put on. So that means you speak another language. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, when you say speaking another language, what do you mean? Another foreign language, comfortably. Oh, uh, actually, no, no. I mean, he's really? supposed to. He, the character does, but I don't. If you have not had a chance to watch an action pack, keep you on the edge of your seat, uh, kind of thriller drama uh interesting twists and turns i invite you to check out john wick now we're up to four for those of you who have been in the franchise moment for a moment and this man plays uh the concierge sharon sharon right sharon 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 and him and the the owner his name is winston now i don't know i would say winston is kind of shysty uh in a lot of ways because he's the owner of the of the new york continental hotel in this series well owner is once you get you know once you get past the first film you start to realize that these continents are all part of they're all part of this uh the uh, uh, shadow organization of, of, of assassins called the high table <laughs> so i mean he's just a, he's just a franchisee he's not he's not owning anything outright <laughs> well here's the interesting thing um we know john wick did something in one of the i think could have been in three on the grounds of the hotel um that kind of put him in 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 a kind of a situation yes um, yes and, and so now when we move into to uh the fourth chapter of this amazing series john wick what can we i know you don't want to give him no spillers and no you know secrets out but at least not for another week <laughs> i understand that there's some upheave uh, some upheaval battles that you and and winston are going to face in this fourth chapter can you share some of that with me um i can only say that uh something happens around our relationship that puts winston on a puts winston on a parallel path with john okay. uh, in terms of um and they actually become partners again in terms of revenge so that for the first time in the john wick films it becomes personal for winston and um our, our relationship is key key to that so that's the uh, most I can say without spoiling it. I got you. I got you. So that tells me that it's, it's growing in a greater way for you and Winston, which, yeah. which could be positive. That could be very, very positive. And, and this fourth chapter will also take uh, you to different countries. Um, Paris is one of the countries that you guys go to. Were you able to film in those in these other countries that they filmed? In I, the I only filmed in Berlin. So um, but I know I'm. I actually don't, I know the shot stuff in uh, in Japan. Uh, there's a, there's an Osaka uh, Continental. Um, I, I don't know if that was shot in, on location, probably, uh, or, or if it was shot in the studio. Uh, and then there's some, there's some more desert stuff. So so there's some more desert stuff. Um, so um, yeah, I mean New York, New York, Berlin, Paris, uh, Osaka, Japan and um the middle east so those are all the locations in the film the only place i actually filmed was in berlin though first time for you going to berlin I'm trying to remember 
Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Wow. Wow. Very interesting. I, look, I can't wait to see it. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, March 24th is when John Wick 4 kicks in. And if you love the first three, will they love the fourth and moving forward? Like, I would think so. Um, it is it is bigger, if you can believe it. Because if you've seen it first three, it's like, how can it be bigger? Because it's <laughs> right. uh, um, But it is, it is, uh, it's one of the most dense, it's one of the most of the densest action films I've ever seen. Man, you have the uh, wonderful, distinct honor of working with two distinguished actors, um, Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne. Um, your experiences, man, what, what, what are you taking from these guys um, on many levels? Well, you know, it's funny because uh, Lawrence and I actually don't have any scenes together. So, but Lawrence is, I have a really interesting um, history with him. Um, he, <laughs> so when I was first in drama school, at the end of my first year, um, uh, Lord Richards, who um, he had just left the drama school. Ironically, he was one of the reasons why I wanted to go, but he had just left the drama school. And so he had, there was a new play uh, on Broadway uh, called, um, um, oh shoot, what was the name of the play? Um, it was an August Wilson play. Uh, anyway, Fishburne was the star of it. And uh, because uh, uh, Richards had, had been the uh, dean of the drama school, we all got free tickets. Wow. So that was the first time I ever saw a Broadway play. So I went to that play and I saw Fishburne on stage, and it's the only performance I've ever seen on stage that reminded me of Marlon Brando. And I remember watching watching his performance, and there was a part of me, my my, there was I got this sinking feeling in my stomach, and I had this thought, you know, I'm never going to be able to do that. Wow. And then I had another thought that said, No, God wouldn't bring you this far to leave you hanging. Brief. And I looked at his performance and I, says, I said, you know what? That's acting. I'm going to learn how to do that. And then about 10 years later, I was at uh, the, the HBO Black Film Festival in, in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and we, uh, we were taking a short hiatus during the second season of The Wire. And I was sitting by the pool. And Lawrence Fishburne walked by the other side. Wow. And I was talking to these young ladies, and I, and I was talking about what a fan I am. They was like, they were saying to me, "Oh, you gotta say say hello to him, and, you know, go up and introduce yourself." I, I said, "I can't do that. I can't do that." So uh, there was like a this cabana bar that he went to. He got a drink, and then he went back to the hotel. But this time, he walked by on the side of, that I was sitting on, and as he walked by me, he stopped, and he introduced himself, and wow. he said, I just, I, "He said, I just want you to know." that the work that you're doing is very important to a lot of people. You don't know who they are, but they know who you are. And he walked away. Ooh, that's powerful, brother. And so, and then the next time I saw him was, um, he actually directed me in a podcast. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an epiphany, man. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, that it, what, what, <laughs> I don't even know how to even answer that or counter answer that with you because, you know, somebody who you obviously respected and admired his work, his body of work, something that- Oh, you he was one of when I got out, when I first started acting, he was one of my idols. I mean, there's just no, he just was. Yeah, yeah. And for you not to know him, but he was very much aware of you. Yeah, that, that was, well, you know what's so funny? So after John Wick 3, uh, uh, we were invited to, uh, Keanu um, got his, uh, uh, he put his footprint uh, on, on a Hollywood walk of, on, on the Hollywood Boulevard. And so on the, on the ceremony, um, after the ceremony, I was talking to Fishburne and I brought it, I brought up that incident. And he, he didn't remember, I don't know if we could say swear words on the show, but he didn't remember. And he said, he said, uh, what'd I say? I said, you don't remember what you said to me? He said, no, I don't remember half the good shit I said. So, <laughs> I heard, and tell me if I'm right or wrong, you were a huge fan of, and maybe still are, comic books. Yeah, I am. I am. Although still, I don't, I don't read DC so much. Believe it or not, I actually have the Marvel app on my iPad. So I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that much of a fan like that. Okay. <laughs> but do you still have old issues of of comic books from back? In the no, day? I, I I got into the, uh, in the '90s once they started making uh, collecting things in trade paperback. So right. I have a lot of trade paperbacks. But I don't have I don't have individual comics anymore. Wow, 
What got you into comic books, man? Um, I was in elementary school. Um, and there was this kid in my class. Actually, it might have been a year behind me. Um, um, after so I sang, so I sang in the choir, <laughs> and uh, we would have choir rehearsal on Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday afternoons after after school. Um, because I went to the, a parochial school. I went to the Episcopal uh, elementary school, and then. Uh, you know, we would, we would have church on Sundays. And so after after choir rehearsal and after uh, church on Sundays, uh, I would go to this drugstore that was at the, on the corner, uh, down, down the, on the corner from the school. And um, uh, at, at first I just went in there to buy uh, candy bars. <laughs> but um, this kid, Adam, he was always reading comic books. And I, I honestly, I didn't like to read that much, but uh, I, I, uh, uh, I started, I just started, I just picked up one. And I liked it. And then before I knew it, I just uh, I really got caught up in the fantasy of of, of of the superhero thing. And it was also the time, you know, I grew up in a time where uh, Westerns and detective shows were real big on TV. So I was mm -hmm. you know, all, all really big in all that kind of uh, fantasy action stuff. Yeah, no, I get um, it. Uh, same yeah, I, I, it. <laughs> I wanted to become a police officer, so I get it. I totally get it. I got absorbed in that world for a moment. Um, before I let you go, though, Lance, I got to tell you, I got to ask you, uh, when you were going to Yale Drama, who were some of your classmates? I know you said Lawrence Fishburne had just kind of gotten out. L Lloyd Richards was... Actually, Fish Fishburne never went to, Fishburne never oh. went to Yale, but he, he, was, he was close to life. So Lloyd Richards, who was the dean of the drama school, and he's, he's really the guy who... Who, who pioneered? Um, uh, he was the pioneering director who uh, who really uh, brought all, all, uh, August Wilson's uh, um, uh, work to, to to Broadway, uh, and they kind of they kind of be uh, rose together. Um, so, um, but Fishburne, uh, um, Fishburne will start in. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of that play, uh, the August Wilson play, and it was it was premiere of that play um, that Lord Richards had directed. Not, not the piano. Um, the people I was in school with at the time, um, the, I think the only person in my class that you would have heard of was Paul Giamatti, who is mm. to this day one of my best friends. And then Leah Schreiber was a couple of years ahead of me. Um, um, and what that was, was kind of amazing. That, yeah, that what, was kind of an amazing class. What was uh, Courtney Vance and Angela Bassett? Were they ahead they of you? Before, behind they you? were there before I got there. Before you got there. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Man, you have a. A wonderful, uh, a wonderful history of of accomplishments, and and you, I know you're proud of everything that you do. Are your are your children? Did they pursue this game of uh, of the no. industry? Are they in a wholly different? No, my sons have. Uh, all, they they each dabbled in it for a minute in high school. Uh, my my daughter had an agent for um for about less than a year, mm -hmm. um when, when I was living in New York, and then one day. Uh, her mom and I were separated, and, and so she was staying in my house. And she came to my house, and it, this was back in the days of fax machines. And she, mm -hmm. so uh, there would be sides for this audition for this new UPN comedy. And she's she's looking at that. She she reads through it, and she said, "Dad, I don't want to do this. This is crap." And wow. I said, uh, "Do you want to do this anymore?" And she said, "No, I thought I'd be going out on auditions for like theater and Shakespeare. I mean, this is I got a test to study for." I said, uh, "I know that's right." Wow. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get, do that. And my so son actually went to LaGuardia School for the for the arts, uh and, 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 and um acting was his major, but then he really got caught up in the science thing. So like he won the AP biology award or science award when he graduated. So my son's a paramedic and my daughter just uh, graduated from um, nursing school. So oh, uh yeah, no, they're very different. <laughs> Well, that's good. I, and no matter what, I know that it's no it's no problem for you because you're proud of them and whatever they had decided to fall upon. So that's a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I don't care. As long as they're happy and, yes. and they care about what they do. Yeah. Well, brother, we're happy that you continue to grow in, in many ways by leaps and bounds. And uh, despite of the adversity of what we go through as a people in your lane in Black Hollywood or Hollywood, um, by God's grace, man, you have survived and you still going through the hurdles as I'm, I'm sure I'm hearing that in the background, but at the same yeah, time, yeah, but I mean, it, it's, it's also, it's like, you know, uh, I, right. I, I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, at least periodically, uh, be thankful for my blessings because they are many. Someone is listening tonight. Who's trying to pursue what you're doing. Some kid, some parent is listening and they have a child that is interested in doing what you are doing so effortlessly now. What could you speak into their heart 
into their mind, into their soul, to continue to give them the encouragement to keep pushing? Wow. This is a tough one because for a couple of reasons. First of all, because the way that I did it was so uh, kind of convoluted. Um, and also because it's particularly in the United States, the game has changed so much. Um, but so I can only, I, I can only uh, uh, speak from my experience, uh, my experience. So from my experience, I would say, um, learn your craft and love what you do. Um, and just keep doing it. Despite of it all. Yeah. Despite of whatever yeah. happens, keep pushing. Yeah. And some people are really good at, because the problem is that in terms of the business, the, the, the skill set of being a star and the skill set right. of being a great actor are different. Um, and uh, the skill set of being a star has, has, has a lot more to do with um, uh, your, your charisma as a human being and how, you know what I mean? And, and, and loving the business part of it. Um, but you gotta, I mean, it is a business. So uh, even though my, um, um, my bias is always going to be in favor of uh, the art as opposed to the business. Uh, you can't survive it unless you, uh, at least to some extent, uh, understand the business. Because otherwise, even if you're really good at what you do and you have great people uh, uh, around you, uh, which is its, which is which is its own challenge, uh, getting getting the right reps. Sure. Um, uh, people will take advantage of you if you if you don't keep um, figuring out the business. Well, brother, you have uh, managed to do it. And I'm sure someone else who's listening tonight will keep those words that you just shared with us and use that as motivation to keep moving forward. But Lance so. Reddick, continue success to you, man. Don't forget, March 24th, we'll see John Wick, the fourth chapter. And this is going to be interesting. <laughs> so we look <laughs> forward to so seeing you doing what you love to do. And I want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. I know it's coming up in June. So be blessed, man, and continue making success seem Thank so you. easy. Yes, Thank sir. you so much. Lance Reddick, Inside of the Quiet Storm tonight. Turn up.